can raise. You can start. Okay. Um, so thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, talk. And it's a um, presentation about um, a separation principle for double integrator. So it's a very basic system, but it's just a toy example, not really a toy example, because you know that double integrator are, are everywhere, including in many uh, mechanical systems. So the aim is to see how to use um, non asymptotic stabilization and ISS to provide an output feedback for a double integrator without uh, building any uh, Lyapunov function, a strict Lyapunov function. Okay. I don't know why I don't. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> to start with, let us re recall something about uh, converg convergence rates. So you you know asymptotic convergence rate means that you reach the, the goal when uh, time is, is going to infinity. You have then exponential stability uh, convergence rate. So you have an exponential dec decay rate then we have what we call finite time convergence. So it means that you reach the goal in a time which is finite. This is a scalar example, a very basic one for which you can compute exactly the solution. And you can see that the time to reach this, the origin is given by some function of the initial state. And for some system, um, this time can be uh, bounded uniformly independently of the initial condition. And this is what we call fixed time stability, fixed time convergence. Uh, okay, this is another example. And uh, one of the people uh, that mentioned this uh, property is here, it's Andrei Polyakov. <laughs> so uh, just to mention him. Then you have what we call prescribed time convergence. So it means that the time to reach the goal is fixed and independent of the initial condition. This is one example. You see that you have an autonomous scalar system for which you can compute the solution. And as t tends to one, all the solution goes to zero. And so the solution remains to zero after uh, one second. This non asymptotic concept <clears throat> was uh, known for many years, um, maybe th more than 30 years. And uh, um, it started uh, on the first property, which is called finite time uh, stability. And so for double integrators, there is here a list of uh, works. So you see that there were at the beginning a few works uh, dealing with state feedback. Uh, and then works for output feedback. I only mention works for double integrator system because it's very specific and uh, it is very easy and um, useful. So what precisely means this uh, finite time uh, stability and fixed time stability? Well, it's not difficult to see that to the classical Lyapunov uh, stability property, you add uh, this uh, finite time convergence. So you can see here, finite time stability means Lyapunov stability plus uh, the existence of a time which is finite for which all the solution are zero after this time. And for fixed time stability, it means that this uh, T of X zero can be uniformly bounded. So if you compute the soup over some neighborhood of the, the origin, open uh, neighborhood, and this time is finite. And as usual, this uh, big O is the domain of the, the property. So what is the problem we are going to look at? It's a very basic one, but it's interesting because it can uh, give you idea for other problems. So you have a double integrator. 
and we are going to to do as usual in four steps. First one is to design a state feedback, then an observer with some output inject injection terms, and then to to look at this separation principle. I mean, you can see that we are going just to design a feedback and then the observer. And then due to the homogeneity property we are going to use and the ISS property, you will have this separation principle. And then we can also look at the robustness of the closed system. <clears throat> so what we need now is some tools. I'm going first to, to look at scalar system, then uh, we'll give some uh, definition and property of homogeneity, the link with ISS, and the property we are going to use, which is in fact B limit homogeneity. So let us start with some uh, scalar system. If I look at this uh, simple scalar system, if I assume that uh, the right hand side is uh, L1, then of course you can fully characterize global asymptotic stability. Uh, so phi has to be uh, such that uh, phi is only zero at zero and x times phi of x is negative for all x uh, except at zero, of course. Then for finite time stability, uh, you can define precisely, well, I didn't uh, go into uh, details, but I just give here one set. So it is a subset of the, the set I've defined here, here S for this function phi. It is a subset for which uh, you have uh, finite time stability. So you just have to look at this uh, function phi of this set F, S, such that at zero, you have some equivalent, which is uh, minus key, uh, some constant, X to the power A zero, A zero is between zero and one. So these uh, things mean the sign power uh, a zero of X, which is defined exactly by this. So the sine power A of X is sine of X, absolute value of X to the power of uh, A, okay? Then if you take a subset of this one, so it is all the function which belongs to this set, but in addition, you have an equivalent at the infinity, which is like this, but this time the power A infinity has to be greater than one then you will have a fixed time stability. Now, these are very simple, uh, sufficient characterization of this uh, property for scalar system. And of course you can uh, go further and use the Lyapunov function to have a similar characterization for n-dimensional systems. Okay. So here are some examples of uh, this kind of function. So the first one, is just to provide finite time stability, phi one. So this kind of function were used, for example, in the paper by Aimo, Bater Benstein in the first paper dealing with this uh, finite time property. And you see that this, for, for this scalar system, you can compute the uh, setting time function like this. Then this is another one. So just the same, uh, the same function, but multiplied by some, something which is positive. And then you can compute also a bound for the uh, setting time function. And on this principle, we can build also a very simple function for fixed time uh, stability. So you see that you have this term at zero, which is dominating at zero, and this term, which is dominating at infinity. Of course, the power S0 should be uh, between zero and one, and this power A infinity should be greater than one. Times one plus some function psi, which is uh, positive. Okay. And then you can see easily that you can compute the uh, second time function uh, by this, uh, this term. Okay. And then you have this one, which appears the first time in the paper by uh, Andre. And you can have uh, a more accurate uh, upper bound 
Well, this upper bound is different from the one provided in the paper by uh, Andre, but you can exactly compute the, um, this upper bound. Now, what is hom homogeneity? Homogeneity is, in fact, a symmetry of uh, dynamical system. So it appears, of course, uh, in ODE, but also in PDE and time delay system. And uh, it means that if you, you are scaling the time and the state, then you leave the uh, dynamics and change. For example, if you take this very simple scalar system, x dot is equal to x, and you perform a scaling of time, so tau now is a new time, it's lambda time t, and z is lambda time x, and then you can see easily that you leave the um, dynamics and change. It is exactly the same. This rescaling is very interesting, and it was used in many, many papers for different things. For example, to derive um, some stability analysis, because you see, due to this scaling, if the property holds locally, then it, it holds also globally. So if you have, for example, local asymptotic stability, then you have global asymptotic stability for a, a system which is homogeneous. So this property was used in many papers. It was used also in system approximation, of course, in stabilization and observation because of this uh, stability an analysis. Um, this um, homogeneity property was uh, declined in several uh, other properties like uh, geometric homogeneity or coordinate free homogeneity. Homogeneity in the Billy limit that I will use uh, later on. And this property was introduced in a very interesting paper uh, by uh, Vincent Andrieux, Laurent Poilly, and uh, Alessandro Asolfi in 2008. And this property was also uh, extended for different system, time delay system, differential inclusion, and uh, partial differential equation. This property can be checked by some algebraic um, relation. So it's very easy to check. And you can see that linear system uh, have several properties. Because of the scalability of trajectory, local means global. And for homogeneous system, you have exactly the same. If you have local property, it's also global, which is not the case for a nonlinear system. So an homogeneous system is in between linear system and nonlinear system because it has the same property of a linear system, but it, of course, it is a special case of uh, nonlinear systems. Attractivity implies stability. As for linear system, you have a quadratic Lyapunov function for linear system and similar property for uh, homogeneous system. It can be shown, uh, Andre uh, uh, did this, that uh, you have, uh, of course, uh, an homogeneous Lyapunov function, but it's, uh, it has some quadratic also form. <coughs> And you will see that we have this uh, ISS property. You know that for linear system, if the origin is globally asymptotically stable, then it is uh, input state stable. And the same for homogeneous system. And to check this ISS property, you are just to look at the degree of homogeneity of the system and uh, to look at the weight uh, of the homogeneity. I, I will speak about this later. So this finite time and fixed time property can be easily obtained using uh, homogeneity argument. Uh, it is well known that uh, if you have a, a system which is globally asymptotically stable and it is homogeneous of negative degrees, then it is uh, finite time stable. So uh, I will just speak here about weighted homogeneity because uh, as I'm going to deal with uh, a chain of integrator, your double integrator, the only um, <clears throat> homogeneity we can speak of is uh, weighted homogeneity. So to start with, we have some weights. So it's a collection of positive numbers, okay, Ri. 
And then uh, you can define what we call the dilation, which is in fact here defined by the diagonal. So it's a matrix, which is a diagonal of the uh, exponential of S R I. So R I are the weights and S is a real number. Once we have uh, introduced the, the dilation, we can speak about um, the property of homogeneity. So a function from Rn to R is homogeneous with respect to this dilation with degree kappa. If for all x and all uh, s in R, we have this uh, relation 12. So it means once you apply the dilation to x, and then you apply H, you recover H, but with a multiplication of the exponential of kappa times S, okay? So kappa is a degree of homogeneity. And uh, the same for vector fields. So if I take a vector field F from Rn to Rn, it is homogeneous with respect to dilation D of degree uh, kappa, if you have this relation. So it's very similar, but you have here this term that appear. It means in fact, if you look at uh, the component of the, uh, the vector f of x, uh, each component has to be uh, homogeneous of degree uh, kappa plus ri, ri are the weights we are using for this weighted homogeneity. So this is one very simple example to illustrate this notion. So I take a second order system, f of x, there is a typo here. f of x is equal to this vector field and the weights are chosen to be one and two. So the dilation is simply the diagonal of exponential of s, exponential of two s. It is not difficult to see that this vector field is uh, homogeneous of vector of degree two, okay? And then if you take this Yapunov function, you see here I just take two terms, so it's homogeneous of degree uh, four, okay? A is not yet defined. I will uh, play with this parameter after. Then if you compute the uh, gradient of V, so each component of the gradient is homogeneous, but this as a vector field, it is not homogeneous. But when you look at the gradient time f, you have this function, and this is uh, again an homogeneous function of degree uh, six with respect to the way to be defined one and two. And this property can be uh, used to simplify the stability analysis. Remember, Due to this dilation, you just have to check this property somewhere. And in fact, if you take here in R2, a closed curve, uh, which is uh, encircling the, uh, the origin, and you prove that on this closed curve, uh, V and V dot are uh, respectively positive and negative, then you are done, okay? This is what I'm going to do. Let's just uh, take a square, uh, one, one, one by one square. So it is a closed curve. And on this um, square, I check if V is positive and if V dot is negative. So I find some, so, some bounds. And you can see that V is always positive if A in absolute value is less than two. And if I take A equal to 0 0.5, then V dot is negative. Okay, and so I have uh, global asymptotic stability. Now, um, since I'm going to, to speak about this uh, double integrator, I take the double integrator, I plug a control, which is uh, very well known to obtain finite time stability, but uh, I will use this kind of uh, things later. So if I define the power alpha one and alpha two, according to this relation. And if I take R to be a parameter defining the weights, <coughs> then it is not difficult to see that the closed loop system is homogeneous of degree kappa. And the same for the observer, if I uh, 
look at uh, I put injection term like this one. So you have alpha one and alpha two, which are power defined by this relation. And I will use this relation later on. Now, as I've told you, there is very simple uh, property linking uh, ISS and homogeneity. So I guess that all people uh, attending to this uh, seminar know what is uh, ISS, but I will just recall a few things about that. So I consider a part of system, nonlinear one, x dot is equal to f of x and p, p is uh, L infinity, f has to be uh, smooth in some sense, so it has to be continuous everywhere and uh, Lipschitz except at zero. Uh, I assume this because uh, I will use after uh, this uh, finite time non-asymptotic uh, pro property, which uh, require this, uh, these things for F. So this ISS property was uh, introduced uh, more than 30 years ago, and it is very powerful uh, tool. Just to call you the properties that every, everyone knows. Um, input to state uh, stability. So C has to be zero for input to state stability. Otherwise, if C is not non-zero, it is input to state practical stability. Beta is a KL function. Gamma is a K function. And then you have also integral ISS which is defined uh, just changing this term by this one with this integral, okay? <clears throat> now, very simple characterization for homogeneous system. If I look at the vector field, so it is a vector field of X and P, so X is in Rn and P in Rm, uh, I assume that F is locally Lipschitz or older, in fact, and that uh, F is homogeneous with respect to X and P with weight R for X and R tilde for P, okay? If the system is gas for P is equal to zero, then it is also ISS as soon as the minimum of this R E tilde is strictly positive. And it is integral ISS is the minimum of this R tilde I is zero and the degree of homogeneity is uh, negative. Now, this is very interesting. Why? Because if I have a controller, a feedback which is, which is designed for X, okay? And if I replace X by uh, X plus P, so, for example, if you look at the, the observer X at, for example, the, the reconstruct, reconstructed state by the observer, then it is ISS because you just have to select R tilde to be equal to R. And that is the property that I'm going to use, in fact, in, uh, in some sense uh, later on. So now we are going to, to go to... Uh, another notion which is called B-limit homogeneity and that will be used later on. So B-limit homogeneity mean, means in fact that if you look at the vector field you have uh, when you are close to the origin some homogeneity property and when you are far away from the origin so when you are at infinity in some sense then you have another uh, homogeneity property. So the vector field F has an approximation at uh, A, so A can be zero at, or infinity. If there exists uh, this function F out, F index, index uh, A, sorry, which is the approximation of F at point uh, A, and there exists a dilation D A and uh, uh, degree kappa A such that this relation holds. So you see in the limit here, it is a uniform uh, limit. Uh, you have to take the sub uh, on the unit ball of this relation. Okay. So the approximation FA 
in fact, has an homogeneity property with respect to the dilation dA and kappa uh, and degree kappa A. Okay. So remember that A can take zero or infinity. So the log goes to minus infinity or plus infinity. These approximations are very useful for finite time stability when you look at the approximation at zero. But uh, there is a, a property that is very interesting for uh, obtaining fixed time stability, which is called nearly fixed time stability. And you had just to look at approximation at infinity. So I'm going to use this property to, to, do, to do the job for the stabilization of this double integrator. Um, there is a very interesting and very powerful results detail in the, the paper by um, Vincent Andrieux, uh, Laurent Prali, and Alessandro um, Astolfi. Well, it is recalled here. It means that, well, I assume that I have a vector field F, which has an approximation of zero at zero, F zero, and at infinity, F infinity. I assume that the three vector field F zero, F, and F infinity are gas. Then what is really interesting is that in that sense, in, in that case, sorry, there exists a Lyapunov function uh, for the whole system, which has a, a homogeneous approximation at zero and at infinity also. Okay. And this approximation uh, are such that uh, all these quantities are negative definite, of course. Then if I look at the system, which is perturbed by uh, P, it is very interesting because you uh, really uh, have an ISS property just at looking at uh, the end part of system. Okay, so if the end part of system satisfies the hypothesis we have before, so it has to be ga gas and to have uh, approximation at zero and infinity. And if the system is homogeneous also with respect to perturbation P, then the, the system has this ISS property. So that's the main uh, fact I will use later. So now we are going to see the design. It's very simple, in fact. Just uh, have this uh, double integrator. I take two functions, phi one of x one and phi two of x two. Of course, this phi one and phi two has to belong to the set I defined for scalar system, in fact. And I have this result. If phi one belongs to this set E with this index, uh, Okay, and uh, the alpha are uh, tuned according to the relation we have for control or uh, the other relation for the observer. Then I will use this function for finite time stability. Second assumption, if in addition we have uh, approximation at infinity, in fact, so it belongs, phi one belongs to this set so at zero, we have one approximation and at infinity, another approximation. And the power of course here has to be greater than one. Okay, then it's not difficult to see that if I have assumption A1, then I will get uh, finite time stability, global uniform finite time stability. And if A2 holds, then I will have uh, global fixed time stability. And the proof relies easily on this Lyapunov function using invariance Lassell uh, principle. So it's not a strict Lyapunov function, of course. So if I take this kind of feedback with phi one and phi two in the set I define, this uh, E set, I will have fi finite time stability, and in these sets, I will have fixed time stability. 
Well, it's not difficult to see that uh, if I saturate this uh, function, it works again. Uh, it's not difficult to see that and to prove this. So I, I have two possibilities. Either I saturate uh, phi one and phi two, or I can saturate uh, phi one plus phi two. And I will have exactly the same property for phi time stability. Okay, not for fixed time stability, of course. So now for the uh, observer, I will look at the uh, output injection term C1 and C2, and I will give some form for this uh, output injection term. Of course, I will pick uh, some function uh, C1 and C2 to belong to this set. I define this set uh, E. So first I, I pick uh, some um, degree kappa zero prime negative and kappa prime at infinity positive. So this one for finite time stability and both to have fixed, uh, fixed time stability. Then I select, of course, the weights according to the condition I mentioned for the double integrator. And it's not difficult to prove using this Lyapunov function that if I uh, a one is satisfied for this uh, output injection term, then the uh, error dynamics of the observer is globally uh, uniformly finite time stable. And if a two assumption a two is satisfied, then it is globally uniformly fixed time stable. Okay. So what I did here is just a design for the uh, controller and the observer that provides finite time stability or fixed time stability. And just selecting this function in the set I defined at the beginning for the scalar system. Now, of course, I'm going to look at uh, the, uh, the output feedback. So in the output feedback, you remember that the, the feedback is u is equal to phi one of x one plus phi two of x two. But of course, if I use an observer, I have to replace a x x one by the uh, x one at from the observer. So it is x one minus e one. E one is zero. Uh, it's x one minus x one at. Uh, and the same here, okay? And here, it's not difficult because of this B-limit homogeneity property. You remember that this feedback is in fact built uh, using this B-limit homogeneity property. Now, uh, you see that I perturb the system using the, the, the feedback and I use not x1, but x1 at, which is in fact x1 minus e1. And here it's x, x2 minus e2. Okay. And so this system, because of the result I mentioned from um, Vincent Drieux, Laurent Prally, and uh, Asolfi, this system is ISS with respect to the input e1 and e2. I have just to select exactly the same weight for X and the perturbation, which is, which is here E, okay? The consequence of this lemma, which is not difficult to, to prove, uh, is that uh, when you uh, close the loop with this output feedback, so you take the feedback you define, you replace X by X at the state from the observer, and you select the function as defined before, so satisfying the assumption we, we have mentioned, with the parameter uh, tune as we uh, mentioned in the previous theorem, then the closed loop system is globally uniformly finite time stable, or globally uniformly fixed time stable if A2 is satisfied for uh, this function. So you see that uh, this ISS property help us to obtain an output feedback without building any strict Lyapunov function. You remember 
for the um, for the controller, I just use uh, Lassell invariance principle, and so it's not a strictly a function. And the same for the observer. Of course, you can look for strictly a function, but it's more complex, more complicated, uh, more complex, more difficult to find it and to prove. Um, uh, that the um, closed loop system is globally uniformly finite time stable or fixed time stable. Okay, the, the proof is very simple. In fact, you just look at the uh, ISS uh, property, what it means. So you, for E, you have this relation. For X, you have this relation. This is a perturbation P, in fact. You see that uh, this uh, means that you will have E that goes to zero in finite time if you have finite time stability or fixed time stability. So this will be zero. And then because of the uh, finite time stability and the property of the function beta, you will have also X that will go to zero in finite time. Well, I did not mention, but there is some refinement of uh, ISS property that uh, is called in fact finite time ISS. So the, sorry, there is one more S here. Finite time ISS, but well, it's not difficult to understand that it is a combination of uh, ISS and the finite time property, finite time convergence property. <clears throat> okay, just now let us have a look uh, on some uh, simulation. So I take here some function phi one and phi two according to nine. So it is uh, with this arc tangent uh, term. I select um, a degree kappa, which is negative, and the parameter r, r which is uh, greater than uh, minus two kappa, and the power like this. Okay. I compare this controller with uh, feedback from Bata Bernstein, for example, classical one, using earlier uh, step size uh, 10 minus four for the simulation. This is what I get. Okay, you can see that if I take the saturation of the controller, both state goes to zero. So in red here, it's X2, obviously. And in blue, you have X1. It goes to zero in finite time. And uh, um, it is compared here with other things. So these two terms are the classical one from uh, Battenbergstein and this one without saturation. Here you can see a, a plot, which is the, the log of the norm uh, versus time. So clearly you can see that you have finite time stability. So in red, at about three seconds, you reach zero. Uh, so here you, it depends on the uh, numerical algorithm, but uh, you reach uh, the precision of the numerical precision of your computer. And um, the same here for this uh, uh, Batterberstein uh, controller. And when you use a SAT, of course, it takes a little bit more time, um, about five seconds. This is the control used. Okay, so you see your saturation. And uh, Okay, we have already seen this. Okay, and now if I look at fixed time output feedback. So first uh, simulation, it was comparison of bounded finite time stabilizing uh, state feedback. And here it's fixed time output feedback. Okay, so the same rule to, to design uh, all this thing. I just pick uh, degree of homogeneity at zero negative at infinity positive, and I select power. Then I choose, of course, the function. So here I don't, uh, I just use classical one in fact, okay. And um, <coughs> all these function can be multiplied, this one, uh, you see here, phi one and phi two, and the output injection term, C1 and C2, can be multiplied by some term like uh, one plus Psi of S, Psi being any continuous positive function, 
with finite limits at zero and at infinity. For example, I give a year list, but you can select whatever you want. It's not difficult to, to imagine uh, such functions. And um, I use in the simulation, I select this arctangent term and I add also a matching perturbation. So it's, it is a perturbation acting on the X2 dynamics. So it is like this one for the simulation. It's not difficult to see that if the perturbation is like this one, it can be bounded by norm of X to the power B. And um, I don't remember what was the value of B, uh, but probably one or something like that. Uh, and then I have to select the power to dominate this term. And it works perfectly as we can see on the simulation. This is X1, X2, and the observer state. This is the control. And now this is a log of the norm. So you see here I take different uh, initial value and I increase the initial value and you see that you reach a limit here, which is very characteristic of the uh, fixed time stability property. Okay, as you increase the uh, magnitude of the initial condition, you increase the time, but it accumulates at some point close to six, six seconds. And this is very characteristic because uh, the uh, cycling time functions is uniformly bounded. So from the numerical simulation, we can guess that it is close to six, this uniform bond. Okay. Different simulation. And then you have uh, plenty of um, uh, citation that were used in the, in the paper. So that's a, a very interesting system. <clears throat> of course, it's uh, useful because uh, second order system are, are very useful, but you can see from that, that uh, if you take a series of uh, ODE, which uh, all has this property of um, B limit uh, homogeneity property and this finite time or fixed time property. And if you cascade all this system, then uh, because of the ISS property you, you will have, uh, you don't need any uh, small gain theorem. Everything will uh, work perfectly. Okay. So here I just cas cascade the system and the observer, but you can imagine easily to cascade uh, several things. Um, and to, to conclude, I will just say that uh, this trick uh, has been used also in other paper uh, that we did. For example, um, recently we, we work also on some uh, time daily system that uh, were um, modeled using some uh, transport PD equation. And um, so if you take an ODE with an input which is delayed, you can see this as an ODE plus a PDE, and then you can use this property easily to derive some similar results uh, for this kind of system. Okay, thank you very much. I think I have finished my presentation.